is tangent. good because a derivative of tangent is secant squared. That's why that works. Remember, we're just going opposite of a derivative now. Not tangent squared either, it's just tangent u. What happens to that pi? I guess I'll show you that step, huh? The over pi, you can make that 1 over pi, and then secant squared u to u. If you'd like to show that, that's probably the appropriate way to write it. Show your constants pulling out. It's on a denominator. It stays on a denominator. And then go for it. We already talked. This is tangent u. Have a plus c here or not. We just need one plus c at the very end of our problem. We'll probably make things a little bit prettier. And what I mean by that is... We'll drop down our negative exponent. This will be negative 1 over x. This will be plus tangent. Well, tangent of u. Now, our u is listed right up here. We just have to put it back in its place. You can have 1 over pi if you'd like, or you can have the whole thing over pi if you'd like. It doesn't really matter. One thing I do have to make certain that you do know <clears throat> Do those pies cross out? No. Heavens no. <laughs> OMG, that earns you a big fat circle, no, with like 10 exclamation points and I burn your paper in front of you, right? <laughs> that's what that earns you. No, you can't, because like I said, that's not multiplication, that's an angle. This is division. You cannot cross that. There's no trig rule that says you can. What you do need to do is put a plus C. How many people feel okay with that example? Good, so looks difficult? Sure, is it really? No, not, not really. Is this one? Not really, as long as you know the correct substitution. That's what this whole process is about, and that's why I'm giving you so many examples, so you kind of see some different instances of what you can do, uh, what you can't do, and some substitutions. You ready to tackle this problem then? Okay. Now, is that in your integration table? No. No. Sine is, cosine is, but not sine squared cosine. Well, here's the deal. If we're talking about using a substitution to solve this, well, what would a good substitution be? Because here's the, here's the deal. If I pick cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? Well, that's up there. If I pick sine, the derivative of sine is cosine. Well, that's up there. So which is the correct choice? And the, one is, the answer is the one that takes care of all the other x's. So for instance, if I picked, let me show you how, how you'd find out you're, you're wrong on uh, substitution in about five seconds. You ready? Here's how you find out you're wrong. You pick your u, you take your derivative, maybe 15 seconds, I don't know. You solve for dx, and you do your substitution, and it comes out with something that doesn't work for you. For instance, this is still sine squared x, right? The cosine was u, and dx is du over negative sine x. Now, one thing that's great about this is this is gone, but only one of those is gone. Did I get rid of all the x's? And there's nothing else you can do there. If it, if it didn't work out kind of nicely for you, either there's another substitution you have to make, or you made the wrong substitution. And that's most of the time in this class, that's most of the time what happens, all right? So for us, we go, oh man, this didn't work for us. I better not try to like force this through. It's kind of like, uh, oh my gosh, I almost made a Star Wars analogy. Um, you should totally do it. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. Yeah, you have to let the force flow. <laughs> you can't force this thing, it didn't work. It doesn't work. You can't make it happen. You gotta just let it, let it work for you. Yes, I am that much of a book. So anyway, how do we find sine to or the, the correct u to begin with? Well, think about it. What's sine squared x mean? Sine x little two, right? It's actually inside of parentheses with an exponent, right? and that, that's the correct substitution. So this really means this. Now, of course, if I wrote it like that, it's a little bit easier to see. Now, I'm not going to write it like that because we typically will write trig functions with the uh, sine squared. 
but you need to know what that means. So our appropriate use substitution is sine x. Derivative of sine x, folks. The derivative of sine x. Is it positive or negative cosine? Positive. The derivative of sine x. Positive or negative cosine? Positive. Okay, good. Solve for dx, which means we're going to divide on both sides. And now when we do our substitution, we go, all right, well, what gets replaced with u now? Does the cosine get replaced with u or the sine get replaced with u? Do, do I mess the two up or is that still there? Still there. So this actually becomes u squared. Is the cosine x still here? For right now, yes. Is the dx still here? No, no, because I need to translate that into my du somehow. I know I translate it into a u. I'm going to have to have a du. And I know that dx was equal to cosine, I'm sorry, uh, cosine x under du. <coughs> See anything nice that happens? Mm -hmm. One of the kind of prerequisites for this to work, I told you, is you've got to get rid of all the variables except for u. You can't have both x's and u's. So you have to have something that gets rid of stuff. That's why we say the derivative has to be somewhere in there, because when you solve for dx, you divide by the derivative, or you multiply, in, in some cases, by the derivative, and that will show up somehow when you make your substitution. It's got to be there. So we're going to have an integral of u squared du. Now that's a whole lot easier to look at than that, isn't it? Man, this is a piece of cake. This is going to be u to the third over 3, no problems. And then, does it? No, not yet. Oh, oh you can. You can right now. Yeah, make sure you end in x's. You start in x's, you end in x's. So sine cubed x over 3 plus c. Sure. You can do one third if you'd like. It really doesn't matter. And that's true for all of these problems. Uh huh. Okay. How many people feel okay with that one? Good. All right. Good. Would you like to try a few more? Yes. Let's do like uh, one, two. Let's do like four or five more. Then we'll talk about the area. By the way, the reason why I'm stressing this so much is because there's really only two sections on integrals that you cover. It was 4.1 and this. That's it. The rest of the stuff is how to use them. Um, so it's kind of like how we did derivatives, right? We did chain rule, we did product rule, quotient rule, and then for the rest of the chapters I showed you how to apply them. It wasn't any new different techniques, and that's the way this is going to be too. So this is the techniques you need in order to go further to solve the application problems that I'm going to show you. All right, now, how about this? You know what I see a lot? This is hilarious. I love this. This is my favorite problem. To, some, one of my favorite problems to grade, I think, because it makes me laugh and then cry, and then laugh some more when I get over crying. I love seeing that. Could you please do that for me? I see that. Where are they? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> don't do that to me. Okay, that one day, I swear, one day, I know how I'm going to die. It's going to be grading <laughs> papers. And one day, my head is just going to explode. And then high velocity splatter on your paper. You're like, ah, oh, better must have died. <laughs> That's how you'll know. If I don't come into class, it's probably because of you, you're going to kill me. People are going to kill me. No, we can't do that. Can't do that. We've talked about that a lot in this class because I need to make the, the distinction between an angle and a multiplication problem. So this is not true that you can just cross those things out. But what you can do is try to make that fit an integration table by a substitution. Now, right now, it's of course not. I mean, the only thing we have that deals with cosine is cosine x. This is not cosine x. Or cosine u. This is not cosine u. We need to make it somehow that. 
so that we can fit it. So what's the appropriate substitution? The co including the cosine or not, do you think? Because if you include the cosine, well, the derivative of the cosine is negative sine, right? That would have to show up somewhere in your integral. That's not there. It's also, a u is typically on the inside of something. So what's on the inside of something here? Square root of x. Square root of x. Let's take that as our u. Let's see, it, see what happens. So not the cosine, just the square root of x. And the reason why we're seeing it is not here so much. It's there. That's where we're seeing it. No, yeah. Would you substitute u? That's a great forward? question. That's a great question. Well, we're going to find that out right now, OK? So we made our substitution because I've taught you how to look for it, right? I said it's typically on the inside of something. So you're seeing, because I showed you that, the square root of x. Now you get to find the derivative of the square root of x and then see what you're going to substitute for, maybe not substitute for. Do your substitution later. Later. You follow me? So let's go ahead and do this. Now in order to take a derivative, I'm probably going to write this as 1 half. Don't make the mistake of putting square or negative 1 half. That will really mess you up. You need to know how to do this correctly. That's why we spent so much time doing derivatives. So x to the 1 half. Uh, how much is du equal to everybody? You need to know this. What is it? One. Oh, great, everybody. That's like five people. Come on. You can do a derivative, right? One half x to the what? Negative one half. Very good. So we're subtracting. <coughs> Negative one half. What else? Dx. Do not forget dx. Don't forget that. Okay, now we've done our derivative. What are you supposed to do now for this problem? Okay, let's be very careful on this and solve for dx. How do you get rid of the 1 half? So I'm going to say that this is 2 du equals x to the negative 1 half dx. Is that true for you? Just to make it seem a little bit more understandable where this stuff is going to be coming from, I'm also going to make this side prettier before I start dividing. You can divide right now, that's fine. But you could also look at it as 2 du equals dx over x to the 1 half. Does that make sense to you? You could divide. Option number 1 is doing this way. Option number 2 is this. Look at the board here real quick. If you wanted to divide right now, this would give you 2 du over x to the negative 1 half equals dx, right? You follow me on that? On this case, I'd be multiplying by x to the 1 half on both sides. This will give me 2x to the 1 half du equals dx. And you know what? Look at the board. So will that one. Do you see that? Moving that negative up to the numerator will be 2x to the positive 1 half dx du equals dx. So there's a couple ways to do this. Either way is fine. No way is better than the other way. I really don't care how you do it. What I care about is can you follow me, can you guys do it, from here to there and get the right signs in the right places where you have to be okay with that. I know it's basic algebra, but you know what? That's our main struggle basically in calculus is basic algebra. So you okay with it? You sure? Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to answer Scott's question. Scott's question was, since I made this a U, do I make this a U? And the answer is, well, let's, let's look at your substitution. You, you have to find a place for this, right? Do you notice how this has an x? If I make this into a u, watch what would happen.